Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. First, I just want to say thanks, everybody, for supporting me. Uh, I'm having such fun, getting an opportunity to do this and um, share with you things that are important to me, and I hope that make connections with you. Uh, I'm always available for any uh, yoga advice. If you're having trouble with a pose or yoga philosophy, I'm open to people coming in, sharing yoga with me, um, still taking a private or two at my house. Love to see anybody who wants to reach out to me. Anyway, keep those cards and letters coming. I love it. It's Thursday. Oh, story day. Oh, one of my favorite stories. You know, it's so true. Um, this guy went to um, a psychiatrist because he was so severely depressed. He had such a sad story that he wanted to tell the doctor. But before he could, the doctor said, no, wait a second, I don't even need to hear the details. Let me help you this way. There's a circus in town. If you go to see the circus, the clown who's in the circus, he's hysterical. You're going to like pee in your pants. He's so funny. So just go to see him and everything will be okay. The guy says, but doctor, I am that clown. Now the history of comedians often uh, has some sadness or tragedy in the background there, isn't it true? Nonetheless, here we are. All right, so what do we got to say today? Yeah, for my journal people, and of course you can just answer this on the fly, you don't have to write it down. These are questions just to promote more self-reflection and understanding. Uh, can you give one criticism and one compliment about your mother and your father? And how did their attitudes influence you in the way you think, feel, and act? And second part of that would be, did they share with you their personal dreams? Hmm? Did they go for it or not? Or did they keep it under wraps? Or did you not even know um, what was important to them by their lifestyle? What was in the shadow? Anyway, love to hear what you have to say about that. I'd be glad to share uh, my own view of that one-on-one. -on -one. All right, thank you. Now, um, just remind you, don't slump. When you slump down, right, slouching acts like a dope to the body. Flint of awareness as soon as you lift your chest, but not only that, it opens up your diaphragm. Don't just take your diaphragm up vertically. Spread your diaphragm laterally. That takes so much pressure off your brain. That's why we teach Setu Bandha for those of you who know what I'm talking about when I'm doing like a yoga shop talk. So Setu Bandha, very, very important. But release your diaphragm so you can relax the tension in your brain. All right. Um, so many people are restless. Their attitudes walking around like they're smoking cigarettes, you know, counting 10 not to get angry, trying to keep cool, but compulsively they're kind of in denial about how angry or how pissed they are. So first thing is, as a yoga student, don't be hypocritical. Don't try to pretend you're further along than you are. There's a lot of things that get me angry. A lot of things I don't indulge in it. I just watch it arise and try to channel it in, in healthy ways. Um, and remember, I'm subject to more suffering in the sleepy state. So it's, it's beneficial to me to pay attention to these things. Not all thoughts pertain to reality. Not all thoughts are one that you want to act on. So you're supposed to be aware of them before you choose to give in to them or indulge in them, you could say. Now, one of the things about trusting yourself is that the energy to do what you need to is in the situation itself. So then you become, you could say, brave. The world is a scary place and sometimes dangerous, but we're up to it. Fearless doesn't mean not having any fear. It means recognizing your fear and going ahead anyway. And a lot of times the acronym false evidence appearing real you don't have to be afraid of that. So be aware of that. So um, I recommend having a teacher. It may not be as deep in the Indian tradition as having a guru, where they say the guru is like a fire. If you get too close, you get burned. If you're too far away, you don't get enough. How you regulate your relationship to your teacher or the teaching so that cooks you, but in some way doesn't make you get lost in it as like a fundamentalist. So whatever it is that is your guru or your path, surrender to it. Offer all your vital and juicy parts to it. Because when you give life to life, life attracts life. Following your own dream is a treasure. And that treasure will attract more life to you if you're willing to follow it. So submit to that. 
because there's some kind of fate, some kind of destiny pulling the thread of you through so you can manifest that gift that you have inside yourself. So I hope you find the teaching with a teacher that helps you unite and not separate yourself from stuff. And then everything starts to make sense all along the way. It's a powerful thing to say because that's called amor fate, where you, you're in love with your own fate. You're willing to accept it to such a degree that even if it has suffering in it, you embrace it, you take it in, and you make the most out of it. So, one more thing to remind you, no one is an excuse for you not doing your path. Love never stops anybody from pursuing their true heart's desire. So, can't use other people as an excuse for why you can't get your thing together. All right, back to the final thing I like to say every day is something about the power of affirmation. I never know who's tuning in, especially for the new, new people. The first thing is you just learn to find something to feel good about while you're thinking about it and feel good about it because your energy brings that into play and your energy keeps it going, not dependent upon anybody else. So that's number one. Watch your thoughts and cultivate the ones that serve you the best. And then understand this relationship between the surface of your mind, the depth of your mind. You can call it conscious mind and subconscious mind if you want to. But you realize we have some wonder working faculties below the surface of our consciousness. So if you turn your requests over to your inner mind with faith and expectancy, and of course always follow up on it, that part of our mind has ways we know, to, know not of. It's pretty smart. And it responds according to our request. So release your request with faith and confidence and surely implicitly in the law of attraction that which is like unto itself is drawn it's going to pull something into your life to help you manifest that that's why they say what you're seeking is seeking you you're one with it so accept it claim success is yours and you're going to see that your faith and conviction in it will cause a subconscious compulsion to will it to be and manifest in your daily life have a great day <laughs>